Welcome to the Nico Semsrod uh, show. You can clap now. Well, that was uh, way more than I expected. Thank you. This is crazy how people are interested in European politics. I got 14 likes for that on Twitter. The show will start now, so please switch off your smartphones. Oh boy, why do we have to watch this Nico Semsrod show? They are making fun of us. I'm fine with the show as long as there are no reindeer sweaters in the plenary hall. Reindeers are great. Yes, they are. They simply are. We should wear them all year. Yes, especially in summer. It's not hot at all. Not at all. I don't like the Nico Semsrod show. Well, I think it's funny. But why didn't I laugh one single time? Because you're an idiot. What? Hi. We've all grown in many ways this first year in Parliament. I have gained 10 kilos. But unlike with many of my colleagues, this isn't due to alcohol. At least not yet. Okay, maybe the EU hasn't really grown. In fact, thanks to Brexit, it shrunk. But because of Brexit, my influence has grown. My vote in the Parliament is now worth 0.01% more than before. I now have 0.14% of a say. And not only has my power and my stomach grown, but I can also spend more money than ever before. This year alone, I have more than half a million euros at my disposal. Let's send it to my correspondent, who will tell you more. Hi, this is my budget 2020. I used the maximum amounts available after taxes and as things are currently changing, this is only the exact budget I have available at this moment. It's not the same for all the other MEPs, it's just more or less the same. Let's start. The most important budget is the staff pay. It's about 330,000 746 euros. With this money I can pay my staff and I can also engage service providers, so companies that work for me uh, on a regular basis. Uh, this money is managed by the European Parliament and if I don't use it, it goes back to the Parliament and I'm not able to touch any of it. This is what I call the PR budget. It's managed by the group and I can use it for every um, communication, videos and um, merchandise and stuff like that. And it's 59,887 euros this year. And if I don't use the money, uh, it will go back to the group and I can't touch any of the money. This is my salary. I can keep it. It's 64,800 euros uh, this year after taxes in Germany. As an MEP, you will get a daily allowance for just being there. So you have to sign in a list and then you will get 323 euros per day and it's meant to be spent for accommodations and food. You can do that on 193 days this year. So that will make, if you're um, there all the time, 62,339 euros tax-free. This money will go directly to my bank account and I can decide what I actually do with it. So. It's not controlled whether I use it for accommodation and food. I just get it. This is my favorite budget. It's the office allowance and you can do whatever you want with it. So it's meant to be spent for office work stuff, but uh, it goes directly to your personal bank account as your MEP. And if you just keep it, 
that is fine with the European Parliament. That's an extra of 45,756 euros. This office allowance is not controlled or supervised by anybody and MEPs also consider it as shadow salary. Again, this is the maximum amount that is possible. And of course, if you're a lazy person, then you can just spend less. This all adds up to 563,528 euros. COVID-19 has halted life in its tracks. But there's one thing the virus can't stop. My heart will go on. The only question is, where is it leading me? On the one hand, my heart longs for a better world where full transparency holds politicians accountable. On the other hand, I have fallen for a bit of a bad boy who is so far from these ideals and so far from me now. David Maria Sassoli, President of the European Parliament. Call me a hopeless romantic, but I think I can still have it all. Let's just set the mood and we're off. My dear David, you may remember me. We crossed eyes last year. I called for a point of order. Point of order? Maybe just to get your attention. I'll never tell. And you said something back to me in Italian, some touching poetry, I imagine. Intervento ai sensi del regolamento. For that brief moment of passion, I felt something real, that together we could accomplish anything. Maybe I'm just being silly, but I think together we can change the EU. This is why I'm writing to you, with one simple request. The money us MEPs have at our disposal for office expenses, over 4,000 euro each month, shouldn't we be required to say where it all goes? Shouldn't this information be easily accessible for all Europeans? We have nothing to hide, right? At least when it comes to matters of the bank and not of the heart. Until I see you again from across the hall, Yours, Nico. And that's how you get things done around here. As of last September, my office is fully transparent about the allowance money we spend on things like laptops, and lobster costumes, and this. It's interesting how much this transparency has changed our behavior. It feels like people are watching over us at all times. So we started to think hard before every purchase and set rules on what we can buy. And as a result, we spend less. Sometimes we still bought things we shouldn't have, but people called us out and we learned to not make the same mistake twice. It's all a pain in the ass and I'm embarrassed about doing things wrong. On the other hand, I've gotten used to the fact that everybody can see how we work. So why doesn't everybody do this, if only out of respect for citizens? It's their money after all, isn't it? Yet none of the serious politicians have followed my lead. Not even the liberal politicians, which is strange. They are obsessed with reducing state spending and being transparent would help them to do just that. And being transparent doesn't make them any less free to carry out their mandate. It just makes them more careful about doing it right. Let's take a random colleague as an example. How about Nicola Baer from Germany's FDP? She could just be sticking the 4,500 euro allowance in her pocket each month. Now, 
I'm not at all saying she's sticking the 4,500 euros in her pocket each month. Let me repeat. I am not saying Nicola Bear is pocketing all that money each month. I'm just saying until she commits to transparency too, how can we know for sure? So let's just remove any doubt and ask her where the money is going. Politely. This is her email. The European Union is a force for peace and progress, a bulwark of humanistic values, a shining inspiration for lovers of democracy around the world. This is my own freely given opinion. Today, in this video that I was definitely not forced to make, I would like to present the EU's five coolest achievements. Number five on this list that I made all by myself is the Erasmus program. Thanks to this program, millions of students have been able to study in other countries, experience different cultures and get horribly drunk playing beer pong. Without Erasmus, contributions like this to European culture would never have been possible. <laughs> now is also a good time to mention that emergency medical treatment is available throughout the EU. So if you're studying or traveling abroad and something like this accidentally happens, <laughs> then somebody will be there to take care of you. Moving on to number four, the Euro. Since 2002, 19 EU countries have replaced their national currencies with the Euro, so that they could more easily trade together, produce together and grow together as one. What a great success! For about six years. Then things took a turn when the Euro helped set off an economic crisis, a banking crisis and a sovereign debt crisis. Well, but all good things come in threes, right? And the Euro is definitely a good thing. Speaking of number three, haha, third place goes to everlasting peace. In 2012, the EU was awarded the Nobel Prize for its role in transforming Europe from a continent of war into a continent of peace. And in celebration of this award, the EU is now creating a European Defence Fund for the development of high-tech military weapons and a European peace facility to bring these weapons to conflict regions. Don't you find the name a little ironic? Okay, moving on to number two then. No more roaming charges. In 2017, the European Union abolished roaming charges for travelers in the EU. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. All right, now it's time to find out which achievement will finish first. I already know it, of course, because I'm the one and only person responsible for this list. And the winner is the Schengen Agreement. The Schengen Agreement allows you to travel through the entire EU without annoying border controls. Well, once you're already inside the EU. But even then, some EU countries aren't part of the Schengen Agreement, poor ones mostly, and some non-EU countries are part of the agreement, rich ones. Do you think that's fair? Okay, okay. So now you know it. The European Union is simply great. It sets you free and lets you go wherever you want. 
Am I right, guys? Please? Und nachdem mich der Sicherheitsdienst dann heute wieder als Sicherheitsrisiko eingestuft hat, habe ich gelernt, dass ich zusätzlich zu den monatlichen Dienstbezügen in Höhe von 8.932,86 Euro auch noch eine allgemeine Kostenvergütung in Höhe von 4.563 Euro bekomme. Was sagen Sie da, Dr. Schulz? Wir Abgeordnete müssen für diese 4.563 Euro keine Belege einreichen und können uns das Geld einfach in die eigene Tasche stecken? Und dann gibt es noch nicht mal eine Obergrenze für Nebeneinkünfte? Das heißt, ich als Abgeordneter kann mir in irgendeinem Aufsichtsrat oder als Berater noch beliebig viel dazu verdienen? Ja, oh Martin, das ist ja wirklich lächerlich. Ich darf doch Martin sagen. Manchmal habe ich das Gefühl, du bist der Einzige, der mir hier wirklich zuhört. Wie hast du das nur all die Jahre in diesem Parlament ausgehalten? Ja, klar, verstehe. Hast natürlich auch wieder recht.